I'm Harold Morgan. Uh, Navajo, my clans are black sheep, uh, born for the Tenjikina honeycomb rock, uh, and uh, my uh, father's uh, paternal uh, father, grandfather is. Um, water coming together to Lini. My mother's side is Kapai, uh, edge of the water. And that's my clan. Harold's most important role model was his father. He raised me uh, uh, with the teaching of, uh, I would say, strictness using the belt or the stick. He's uh, spanked me, whipped me, and um, in all, I, I later found out that uh, uh, it was for him to say to me that uh, he wanted me to be growing up as a good young man. Uh, with the principles of um, the Navajo uh, man, father, and, and a home. I didn't know that. I, I, now it comes back to me that and this is the reason why there's uh, strictness in the house. Yeah. He didn't tell me anything that he's passing. Nothing. My mother said nothing too. She just said that after he passed on this, you can have this red tail hawk feather. You, your father used to have that and he did uh, ceremonies with it and so you can have it. She was, she said to me, my mother. So I, I carry that. Today I have it. Uh, so uh, uh, it's it, that's the way I feel about it, and it it uh, I I can't I can't uh, I don't want to uh, lend it out or think that it's just not another this another feather. It's something there that uh, when I say that I don't understand it, but who understands? I think that it's who understands the holy people. During his childhood, Harold was taught the importance of planting. I was told by my parents was don't let a year go by. I remember this area used to be always all uh, plowed up, and he used to do that by horse and uh, handheld uh, plow. One plow, uh, two horses pulling the, the plow. Uh, I, I, I used to see him uh, holding one of the rings uh, in his mouth. He, he'd be uh, uh, going down like this and uh, uh, he would get after us a lot. And, but sometimes we, we, we'd be following him, walking and uh, uh, putting the corn in, planting like that. And we used to plant potatoes, squash, uh, corn, blue corn, uh, white corn, yellow corn, um, cabbage, uh, turnips, all the, some of those vegetables that uh, I kind of think that we were raised on. Sports played a large role during Harold's years in high school. When I was a little boy, I remember that my dad used to tell me to run. And I used to run from sawmill to the house uh, he would say, take off your shoes and run. I used to carry my shoes and run. Basketball in the winter uh, wasn't so bad. Uh, I like to shoot from the corner because usually I hardly miss from there. I run down the court and then I'm still running, I uh, make a jump shot from there.
Whenever we get together, he always stressed about being active and staying fit. He didn't. He never likes us to sit on the couch. He calls the TV the idiot box, and he doesn't like us like sitting around. And like, I remember like just thinking to myself, every time I played, like, well, I should try my hardest and should always do this and work hard. And I was the captain of my volleyball team for the second year, and it was my second year in varsity, so I just figured I always put my heart into everything. And he taught me to be a leader from just the way he acts. I got hurt in, in a football game. My knee got torn, torn up. And I was on crutches about three months and through the winter. So I, uh, I dream about it sometimes. And I wanted to go back in on that last few minutes when after I got hurt. I couldn't stand up on the field. So I was pretending that I wasn't hurt, so I was crawling back to my position. I crawl on my hands and knees like that, and by my knees, it's in pain, and I try to pretend that I. But they saw me, so they told me to get out. So when I walked out, I tried to run. I just pretend, just pretend to that I wasn't. There wasn't anything wrong with me. So I tried to lift up my my knees like that and run, run. But it it, it was just getting worse. So I got out and then they told me how everything was. I said, oh, it's okay, it's okay. I said, okay, yeah, okay. Rest up for a while, we'll get you back in there. So they said, keep yourself warm. So I was running, running back and forth alongside the field and I tried to keep up. It just got worse. It just got worse. And as I guess it began to get cold, my knee began to get cold, colder and colder, and just got worse. The pains, and I didn't get to go back on the field. Harold describes how he started to work for the Navajo Nation Tribal Council. I and my family, my wife, and we used to to try to get by. We were getting unemployment general assistance from the tribe. We were getting food stamps, and we were selling at flea markets for two years. And my kids were pretty well all in the elementary, middle school, and high school, I think it was. So that's what we went through. Until one day that uh, uh, another chairman or president came in into the tribe on by election, and his name was Peterson Zaw. He won the election, and there is another person by the name of Chiliazi. Um, they were in office, I mean the president's office, and Jack Jackson. And somehow they 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 they, uh, they picked me to work for legislative. As time went on, I guess the sacrament that I have was given to me by my father, hand trembling. When I came in here and I start talking about the murals, it seemed to connect like this. It, 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 it just began to get more clearer, more meaningful of what the government, 
to murals, to history, of what the way, the teaching, the culture, the tradition, what people were beginning, were, were, were you know, like here now and then, they talk about. And it was, it was in here. It was all here. I didn't really know it. Before this, the, the, how to do that, how to do sand painting, how to grind corn, the purpose. After that, this thing came on like that. It's being taught, this is how you're going to do the sand painting. This is how you're going to do the corn grinding for the purpose of the natural way, living from earth, Mother Earth, because that's how we were taught. This is how the Spirit teaches. This is all natural. That's the teaching. Harold served in the community for many years in many roles. Uh, the sawmill chapter, been secretary treasurer for the chapter, vice president for the chapter, on the school board uh, for Winslow, for Wingate, Indian Education Committee for Winter Rock. But now I'm not on any any committees. This is my job. Sawmill chapter is calling me back. They want me to run for office next year. Harold talks about what the government means to him. The government that we make, we built, is for us to feel good, live good, live comfortably, live to where that we can speak good express ourselves, freedom, what is known as freedom. I think that's the government. If we don't have that, nobody, somebody says, you only speak the way I want you to talk. That, I think, is what is called a dictator. That is wrong. What else can we be doing? What other activity? I just say, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming across from the east and taking away our land. Thank you. I got toes from you. I got some education. I got a vehicle outside from you guys. You should be thanking yourself too, you know. So it's nice to have this building. It's enough to have the painting, the doors and everything, the lights. You miss those things. We're here and we're talking like this because it was possible for us to be living together. That's what I say. Nice to be neighbors. We can't say as natives condemn the non-Indian. Government is supposed to be for goodness, betterment of life. That's the way I feel about it. So uh, that's that's the way I, I feel about it because even the Constitution of the United States says, one nation under God. It's under God. I guess that means that God is over us. Spirit, spiritual world is over us, and we're right underneath it. Harold describes his unique haircut. I just thought one day I'll do that then. Somebody said, I think somebody said that uh, you would look good. You would look good. 
And I've heard people say that. Come in here and say, it takes a lot of courage, I think, for you to have a haircut like that. But you look good. For some reason, you mix it. They say, it, to me, it looks like it's only for you that's going to make it look good. That would make it look good. Yeah, he kind of encouraged me to get a mohawk. Not like verbally, but like just him having one made me want one even more. Harold talks about his role of ringing the bell before tribal council meetings. This bell here is an original uh, locomotive, steam locomotive uh, bell of the railroad system, the Santa Fe. Uh, railroad, uh, I believe is what they used to call it. Um, it has a date on here presented to the Navajo Tribal Council by the Santa Fe Railway Company November 1956 for uh, the, the Tribal Council at that time to be given out notice that uh, uh, a meeting of the council will be starting and they had that siren on top, on top of the rock way up there. Uh, we used to hear the siren at 12, 12 noon, 12 p.m. You know, that was their, their, their notification that it was noon time, you know. Well, while us right here, ours is the bell for the meeting, you know, and uh, so anyway, that's when uh, I ring the bell, I made it myself, my idea uh, that I would ring it 21 times, much like the idea of uh, the 21 gun salute uh, and then the, the bell when around 10, 10.30. Uh, I would make that decision as to when and how many uh, delegates we had uh, when it was 88, uh, if it was coming around 40 to make it 45 once we hit one over halfway uh, and we're we're counting uh, I'm counting maybe at 40 and so I I ring the bell or I go by time so I make that whichever way you know uh, 1040 is kind of late 1030 is not bad uh, 1020 1015 uh, you know, and then sometimes it's important. It depends on the agenda that the council has. If it has, if I think that the, the agenda is kind of long and it's going to take uh, a whole day, uh, and then much of it will go tomorrow or the rest of the week, uh, uh, I would, you know, like to start as early as we can. So that's when I ring the bell, you know. You know, something like saying that, hey, come on, man, let's get started here. It's in the morning. I mean, you know, if we wait anymore, we're going to lose uh, part of the day again. You know, uh, let's get going, you know. So that's how I ring the bell. Um, so anyway, here I go. I'm going to ring it twice. Okay. You just have to be your own self. So you live the life that you have, like the way you're, you're, you are, the way you are, the way you present yourself to the world. That's the way I think about it.